Hello? January 24th, 2023. It's time to start on the problems of section 3 and chapter 2. They say we should use this formula. But I think it would be, or more, I'm more inclined to um, rewrite it because this is chi 2. Chi 2 mark. So, what I would like to do is to prove the proposition for chi 2 and then use this formula 3 6 to do it in general. I have made a table of chi 1 and chi 2. I don't know if we are going to need it, but then we can work on chi 2 here. So first we should show that it's a character on the Gaussian integers modular 4, which it appears to be according to my table. But So we must work on chi 2 of x plus 4. And of course chi 1 is a character module of 2 plus 2i, and in that ideal 4 lies. So it's just chi 1 of x. And then we need to take the norm of x plus 4, x bar plus 4 times x plus 4 equals the norm of x plus 4 times the trace of x plus 16. What do we do here? May that not... The trace of x, isn't that always equal, even? If x equals a plus ib, then the trace of x equals 2a, so it's even, so it's actually congruent to the norm of x modulo 8 and here that means that it's the same residue modulo 8 so it gives the same so that shows that chi 2 is a character modulo 8. Then we must show that it's primitive, no, modulo 4, sorry. Then we must show that it's primitive, so there's only one uh, prime dividing 4, namely 1 plus i. Yeah. Of course, we have uniform factorization in the Gaussian integers, so I needn't 
to use the ideals. And that means that we must show that 1 plus um, that chi is non-trivial on this set. So 2 plus 2i, uh, we have that, uh, just 1 plus it, 1 plus it, 1 plus it. So we very quickly find a value that is not equal to, uh, to plus 1. So that's the proof. So that's my proof that chi 2 is a primitive character modulo 4. Then back to the general case. So we shall first prove that chi n is a character modulo uh, modulo 2n. Yeah, here we have it. that what we already did. So now there's just an N on here. So it's equal to modulo 8. I think it's the same. we are not going to use that, really. We were going to use it modulo n, so I have to work on it again. And that means that this, of course, is 8 something, let's call it alpha, and null. So, and this is also 8 in order, so it's equivalent to, and that's uh, of course 2n, so it's equivalent to xx modulo uh, 4n. 
Now that was an overkill, wasn't it? If this really happens, then it shouldn't be primitive. So I think I've made some minor mistake. This come out modulo four, so it's just the norm of x. No, it's just x itself. Oh, um, sorry. 4 in naught, um, and it's and chi 2, yeah, we just take it um, plus 4 in naught, and the norm of n plus 8 alpha or something, yeah, beta this time. Um, we don't need all that. This uh, just something in null, beta in null, in naught. What? Uh, That was that. Next, we shall show that it is primitive, and that's going to be the, the bulk of the work. And we have the same three cases as in the book. The first is when the prime is 1 plus i. And then the ideal we are working on, it's modulo 4 and naught. So that means we are in 2 plus 2i and naught. And we must show that chi n mark is non-trivial on 1 plus j. Let's try to reduce it to the real numbers. No, we can't do that. We can't multiply it by like 1 minus i, because then we, then we enter where it is uh, a character modular, what it is. So that's not it. I'll just have to look at what they do in the, did in the book, and then I'll try to repeat that. That was very, very simple. Uh, we have that x... Oh, 
x. So an x lying in 1 plus j is equivalent to 1 modulo n naught. And that means that that this gives unity. So it's just equal to x2 mark. So we have to find a guy in this ideal So 1 plus 2i and how can we do that? They actually 1 plus 2i, 1 plus 2i change sign So we have to find an odd addition to 1 plus 2i. If it's only um, even, then it's modulo 4. But n is odd. And naught is odd. So, so this is where it's actually um, the the first one will do because it's an odd number. Do we need to formalize that? So it's one of the odd guys, and uh, since this one gives minus one or the other odd guys odd multiple of two plus i will give minus one i think that should do it so that was case one the next case is a prime a plus i b dividing n naught and then the ideal will be 4 plus n naught divided by a plus bi times a minus bi no, divided by p then. where A and B are integers. And again, we must show that when X lies in one plus the ideal, etc. And here I have to read the uh, book as well to see what they did and see if I can repeat that. Well, it seems we just have to, to, to do it. So we have an x equal to 1 plus 4 alpha. and need to compute the norm of it.
Yeah, we'll um, do it like this. Now, what did I do? All right, I haven't really solved the problem, but let's see if we can go on. So A and plus the same. Uh, B I So I'll just make a break and then do this calculation. All right. When I saw the result, I realized that I had not been very bright here. So this is, this is the way to write it. And then this guy times this, this guy gives P itself. So we get one plus uh, the cross product uh, where bi cancels and then we have two a's and then the product here of these guys where this gives p so p squared there's only p and that means that this is equivalent to one plus 8 alpha and naught p times a. We had chi 2 would give the same result of all of this, didn't we? Uh, yes. Of course, this is in uh, one plus four times an integer. So we just need to check this guy. And that means that the norm must go through all residue classes of a naught. just the uh, the Chinese remainder theorem. Now A so we need to show that the greatest common divisor of 8A and naught divided by P oh that doesn't happen I just need to check again what it is I must show here. So I didn't quite understand the proof as it was. It turned out I hadn't understood the depth of the argument. You see this guy. Uh, it's the product where the primes divide a naught. That index was not necessary. And it's equivalent to one modulo all the primes except P. So they all give the same except nx modulo p 
So we must run through all the uh, residue classes modulo p. So we need only to have the greatest common divisor of these guys being unity, and that's because n is square n naught is square free. There we are. And since we run through all the residue classes, then some of them will give minus 1 and some will give 1. So there are two different values. All right. And what do we have here? Now time to try the last guy. And then I shall have my lunch. So that was the third third case, P equivalent to uh, minus 1 or 3 modulo 4. Well, we must just do the same again. So the norm of x I've lost the thread. So we must see, before doing this, we shall show that on, on if x lies in 1 plus n naught divided by p, then we have a value giving non-zero. Uh, non-unity. I forgot the number two. Um, it's four and naught. Yeah, I keep losing the thread, so I'll take a break and then collect my thoughts and carry on. It seems the recording failed for the last few minutes so I'll just explain what I did so we have x of this form and then modulo 4 it's equivalent to 1 and for other primes in n then p it's also equivalent to 1 and then for the other primes we have that it's well, for p we have that it's co-prime with p and that means that when alpha is a Gaussian integer then this will run through all residue classes modulo p in the Gaussian integers modulo p and that's the Chinese remainder theorem in action here. Finally the um, map the norm map here is onto as explained in the uh, or that's rather explained in the text though all right and so it's on to this guy so there will be 
an x in all the residue classes modulo p or norm whose norm lies in all of them and since this is a non-trivial character like it could be equal to minus one then it would be minus one and that finishes it <laughs>